with Yeshi's name as well, like Yeshi Yeshi. When I listen to it, I just can't get the same sound to come out of my mouth. So I'm just like, yeah, GG, man. I'm good. I just, I just live with it. And I'm just calling the Blue Protoss for the majority <laughs> of this series as we are going to be kicking it off. In the bottom right-hand corner, though, I'm going to get the easy intro with our Red Terran player from Mystery Gaming. It is Coffee. Well, you're going to need a nice steam. In fact, if you want to stop the Terran pushes that are coming across this map in the top left, left map in the blue, it is Jayshi. This is another fun series because Jayshi is one of those players who has continued to push for the kind of, you know, one of the top spots in China. And, you know, he consistently was kind of getting up there. And he's just not quite had that kind of bigger figure to finish. He's not been able to go all the way. He's kind of been outperformed by Firefly. And then I, I say it's interesting because Coffee to me is kind of very similar to XY. You know, he plays a bit more wild. He plays a bit more aggressively. He has his own build. So it's to me a bit of a recall to our first series of the day where Firefly took on XY. These are a very similar set of play styles in my eyes. 100%. You know, it is funny as well, because you've got, obviously, Jayshi playing D for DKZ. You've got Coffee playing for Mystery Gaming. Um, but it's actually Jayshi whose ID used to be Mystery as well. So that always kind of does mm, my head in a little bit. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> he changed his name at some point. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, it's weird because statistically, Coffee preys on, on Jayshi. Uh, he has got just great builds. Like, he's so good with his timing attacks and the like. And I think overall, Jayshi, I mean, Jayshi's had moments where he's beat Oliveira and dethroned him. It's, it's happened before for like yep. a season a couple of years ago. And he's had these moments where he looks so fantastic. But Coffee is just like his Achilles heel. It's it's his kryptonite. Um, Coffee always has a build order to catch him off guard. And right when you think Jayshi can stop the frontal pushes, it's when Coffee goes into this like chaotic, I'm going to drop four places at once. And I might not be microing every drop, but you're definitely not defending four things at once correctly either. And I'm just going to overwhelm you with chaos. So occasionally Coffee will bring that out. More often than not, it's just a really crisp timing attack from Coffee. As you said, X, Y, and him do share a fair few builds together. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Jayshi can bring out. Can he find a way to stabilize as his recent results against Coffee have been very one-sided in the Terran's favor? Yeah, Coffee, to be fair, has as well, I feel like, since Katavita, not this year, but it was last year, right, where he beat Zaun. And uh, since then, it's like, we've had a bit more of an eye on Coffee, and he's had a couple good results as well, so it has been cool to kind of follow that. And, um, yeah, just, I mean, Coffee has been... He kind of leveled up, and then kind of just has stayed at that kind of very high level, where suddenly he's no longer kind of to, like, me, like a top 16er in Asia, but, like, he's really, like, a top 4 to top 8er in Asia. So, yeah, there's that yeah. Uh, aspect to it as well. Of course, both these guys are 1-0 in the group so far, so both looking to kind of well, he keep clean. He invents the builds, Oliveira goes and wins with them. I yeah. Think. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the way I look at it. I'm like, especially in this matchup, uh, getting scouted straight away, not great. This is that 3 Rex build, which I told you guys when Oliveira did this, like, I'm like, man, this is the coffee build. Like, I remember the first time I saw, it was back on the Blackburn map pool when I really became a big coffee fan. Because I remember watching him and I was like, I didn't feel like anything was blitzing fast. You know, this pro game is like this kind of um, Shin, used to be Ragnarok, I feel like, is kind of like this for Zerg. It doesn't feel like he's doing things that are impossible to execute. They're just really smart and well-planned. And I think that's that's what Coffee strikes me as. Whereas I look at the way he plays and I go, oh, I, I might be able to kind of replicate that and like do that on the ladder at my own level and make something work. Whereas other guys, sometimes it looks like what they're doing is just so knife's edge and flashy and hard to pull off under pressure. You're like, oh man, I can't I can't even copy that at all. Like there's there's nothing to learn. But Coffee, he's, he's really good at optimizing these pushes, having his whole build designed towards a very sharp point. And uh, yeah, the Reaper gets denied, but he knows it's Blink. He can see that it looks like a two-gate Blink Robo. Simply because you see a probe looking to take a third at four minutes, that's what you're assuming. It's like around that phase. Now, of course, we know it's actually a three-gate, so it is a little bit safer, and that's going to be very important because you do not want to go two-gate Blink Robo against a man that's building just nothing but Marines and tank off, tanks off uh, three racks in a factory, skipping the starport to get a massive army on the map. Yeah, I'm just going to go for as much as possible here, really power up, and uh, obviously provide some aggression. In the fairly near future, the Stalkers poke, and they get rid of one SCV, but nothing too major. Just going to finish that wall off as coffee, and okay, uh, Jayshi is going to just go make his way into that robo base. So, getting himself teched up, trying to get those important tech units out to help him with this incoming push that you're expecting to see from coffee sooner rather than later. As that still will be done soon, we'll see if he wants to go. He is starting the starport as well for the future medivacs. 
you know it would have been 300 IQ this game. So basically what's happened is Coffee's 3 Rex factory got scouted. So he's playing the more conservative approach where you add the third gas, you add the starport, you add the eBay, you get upgrades. The, the really, really 300 IQ thing would be if he just like pulled the boys and shoved with his first two tanks and was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going with stim and shields like the moment this stuff's ready. Like, I, I know you know it's coming, so it shouldn't be good, but I'm just going to go even harder into the attack. Whereas as it is, it feels like Jayshi has had all the information to prepare for this. You know, we're going to get the Robo Bay up. We've got Charge, Forge, not going too hard on the probes, but enough to still have a nice advantage, picking off depots and now a Marine or two going down. This is really well done by our Protoss player. I just want to see like a Colossus start after this Immortal, which, yep, he has indeed started. And a lot of Chrono Boosts into that. And it feels like, yeah, I mean, you scan, you see this. Coffee's trying to make intelligent decisions right now, but I think Jayshi has the kind of momentum with a forward position, a balanced set of tech going down. Coffee, he's looking more and more committed to a two base push, but he's going to have to move out soon or it's going to get even harder to make this work over time. Yeah, it, it, the longer he waits, it just feels as though the more opportunity there's going to be for Jayshi to have everything he needs, right? I mean, the Colossus count has grown, the extended thermal lances are going to be done if we don't get moving soon. He built two more barracks up for the future, but again, there has to be something in the right now as well. And we are starting to make a little bit of progress out the front. I think at this point, coffee's taken so long. He Oh, I was going to say, I think he has okay. to wait. <laughs> I was like, I think he needs to wait for like a few Vikings and Marauders and just keep building tanks and get up to like a bunch of Vikings and tanks. But he's actually shoving it and force field's so good here. Force field's so good. The Colossus is out. Second force field, maybe not that important. I think one more force field to buy time on this ramp and keep warping in one or two more sentries. And the charge is done. The gateway count's coming up. The second Colossus is almost here. The Marines and the SCVs are getting ravaged. You really can't push forward very effectively. This is so nasty for Coffee. It feels like Jake, she has all the positions. But keep in mind, Coffee doggedly knows where the win condition is. He will not back away from this. He's committed. He's going to go for it. He's stepping on top. There's no more sentries here. Just one force field. The Colossus is going to get jumped on. It goes down. That is huge. The second Colossus is out on the map. It's going to arrive. But there aren't that many zealots yet. My lord, what a crazy shove from Coffee. The Immortal gets a eviscerated by the siege tanks a wild fight here the colossus can't do anything to the tanks he's got to back away jayshi does not have the numbers i cannot believe coffee is breaking through i'm telling you this guy is a mad lad jayshi seems to have had everything ready and yeah he's gonna have to give up this third base i don't think he can fight right now he doesn't have the numbers yeah he does not and all he, he that the first colossus going down the way it did was absolutely uh devastating quite frankly that is going to be so costly and uh, that just allows Coffee to really push in and to get into this space here, get rid of this third base. And Pig, we have got ourselves Coffee. He's going to cut off. Trying to make oh, it work. Ooh. We're going to go. We're going to send us the tanks re siege, but the Colossi are not going to last for long. This elf put in work. Can we get rid of enough uh, tanks here? Uh, the, yes. the Colossus going down is a disaster, but he might just have enough Stalkers and Zelts to do it. Remember, he's two base against just 36 worker Terran. But I think he's got to pull back to Jayshi. Wait for another Colossus. He's overextending into the bio right now. The bio ball is there. He, he could have cut off the reinforcement with charge lots earlier. He needed to do that. But because Coffee's been rallying to the front, this little set of bio is a problem. He will hold with the battery overcharge, though. He's going to even take out a medevac. Not too bad. Bit of a force field going down. Fighting so far in front of his base. Jayshi does have a new third on the south side. Coffee is basically just building Marines, Marauders, Vikings, trying to gather up an army. But it feels like I think it's a good enough hold for Jayshi because you kept most of your workers alive. But it was definitely nail bitingly close. And I think Coffee's just going to build up to round two and probably go again sometime in the next minute. Yeah, I mean, he's got not really got any other option, right? So he just has to go one more time. And with denying the third and everything and getting rid of the tech count, it gives him the possibility of making it work out. You know, beforehand, if none of that happened, going again right now is almost always a doomed experience. But... This time it actually has that little bit of potential. It actually has a little bit of hope and possibility. So we'll get this uh, moving as we do see the Observer. Going to get caught by the Viking and a few Marines. And yeah, it's just a matter of time. What is the what's the go moment here for Coffee? Like when do you decide that, okay, that's enough time to send it? Uh, I think you kind of need the units to build to a natural power point. He's decided three tanks, a couple of Vikings. He's got a good set of Marauders up front with Concussive. Said, let's pull the boys again. He's going to keep building boys again behind this for another potential, you know, round and maybe moving his base out. SCVs get spotted. Stalkers will be happy to pick off as many of these <laughs> as they can. They, they should just go behind this army. That's the correct blink path. He actually recalls to rejoin everything on the front. I, I, I do think that's a pretty good Protoss force here, especially if he gets a battery overcharge up during the fight. Guardian Shield is big here. Whoa, no battery overcharge. He didn't save energy on his next side. That is an issue. He's not got many Zealots in here either. 
Oh, but the bio's thinning out. The SCVs are gone. Those SCVs being gone is massive. And the battery overcharge, even though it was delayed, no. does join the frame. But the Colossus rallying into the Viking Marauder disappears so quickly. Uh, once again, maybe give up the base counterattack with Zealots. Cutting off the reinforce or coming from behind with Zealots would be huge. That Colossus. Oh, it's in oh, trouble. It's going to yep. go down. Every every Colossus has just had a bad time in this match, man. As the Zealots get through, the Zealots are probably the answer right now because the tanks don't do as well against them. But you kind of need enough Zealots for that to really you know, happen in the first place. Now this base is going down. We're going to lose this income uh, availability. And that is going to be Coffee. He still has the siege position set up, doubling the army supply of his opponent and looking good to take this game one somehow in some way because it really felt as though his timing was shut down. It really felt as though he didn't get it. He got the moment where he's like, right, this is it. I got a shove. And he just kept getting enough in each of the trades because these few Zelds are going to charge forward oh. and we don't kill Zelds very quickly. We're going to have to micro the tank back in the meta back. A bit of micro. The Immortal and the Archon getting to work. And again, those tech units are so hard to get rid of for Coffee. That's why Yeshi or Yeshi has a little bit of an opportunity here at least. Oh, the Archon does pull back, gets itself healed a bit. Immortal Archon Zealot coming forward. Dude, he can still hold. This Immortal Archon is doing so well. Landed Vikings, these damage marauders doing nothing. Coffee needs to pull back. I, yeah, I mean, you've lost your third. You need a new Nexus desperately, but at the same time, Coffee needs to move his main down. Like, Coffee should have done this a while ago. His, his main is mining out. I know he doesn't have that many workers, but he's got plenty of gas. So he transfers from the main to the natural. He should move that command center down. He can maintain some mining. Ah, it kind of feels like the point where you, you maybe want a multi-prong to take advantage of the fact that there's no stalkers. If you can make Jayshi mo make more stalkers, stalkers are the kind of low quality units Protoss really doesn't want to spend money on in this scenario. So maybe do a little bit of a drop in the back. If you can deny that third one more time, perhaps you can make something happen. Coffee is doggedly committed to this. And honestly, the fact that he's making this look so good when Jayshi had every piece of information and warning about what was happening in this game, it, it makes me worry a little bit for Jayshi's uh, ability in a game where Coffee denies scouting better. Like if Coffee could have denied the info, Jayshi, I don't think would have had any chance of defending these waves because he knew minutes ahead of time still is struggling. And that bodes very well for the Terran player in the future of the series, even though right now I would say Jayshi is favored. Yeah, he's down in the army supply, but he's got two next side building and he's doing nothing but making a mortal arc on Zealot, which is the most efficient army for him to try to hang on this game. Yeah, again, the double expander, but puts the pressure on Coffee again. His army supply lead Coffee is not as big as before. And you look at the units and you're right. It's the kind of units now from Jayshi which just look better when it comes to these trades than what we've had before. The Colossi obviously never really got to stay up alive long enough, but these Archons are going to be tough to get rid of. The only concern, I guess, is these Liberators are going to be tough to get rid of on the side of the Protoss player. Um, so that's going to add to kind of the siege potential of this, but if we have enough from Jayshi and he can just attack in, we are just going to be able to take the Concave attack through. A couple of Lib shots aren't going to make the difference. As, uh, well, actually, you're going to get the catch on the back side of this, so grab the tanks before they siege, and the Libs are going to be split oh. apart a bit weirdly as well. And that Disrupt shot, okay, does get denied at least, because that could have been deadly, but the Archons are all in this fight pick, and they are whacking away. we get Zelda coming in from the left-hand side. The SCVs are over on that location, and as units oh, land, is fine. it going to be enough? It's just a wild it's time. So, it, it's so awkward. The Zealots all charged on a rallying Marine at the start on the right side of that fight, which was a disaster for Jayshi. That being said, the SCVs were all just doing nothing on the left side, fighting the Zealots as well. So it there was, there was kind of, you know, parts which were good for each player, parts which were bad for each player. Jayshi's trying to warp in Stalkers, but once again, that third base is going down. He's got a fourth in the north. You know, he has another base. I think Jayshi can still recover from this. He could definitely take that Liberator out from behind and just blink away, keep warping in more Zealots. A new Colossus coming in is huge you do need to have a colossus in the mix you know um but yeah i think the zealots charging awkwardly it felt like jc just wasn't as confident with, with when he jumped on the army right and then th that tiny bit of hesitancy meant that rallying marine came from the right and the attack movement all the zealots went hey that's the closest enemy unit let's charge away from the army which is the opposite of what you want them to do and uh, unfortunately, that works in Coffee's favor. I think Jayshi had an army that should have trounced him, especially getting him before he was sieged. Ends up being a much closer trade than he would like. Their neck and neck and army supply, that still bodes well for Protoss. This command center hasn't moved down yet. Coffee has pulled more workers with every wave, 15 against 50. This looks like Jayshi is finally going to weather the storm. I think he may have had to pay part of his soul to do it, though. Honestly, he's a couple of Horcrux down after this game. He's feeling stressed. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's had to re really, really give it his best to kind of survive through then and, and somehow just about eke out the victory because again at first it looked so good for him and then to be put through all these stresses and these close engagements and coffee just about getting the jump on you and everything 
What a wild time. GG's game number one does go the way of JC. Our pros player is going to grab the opening map here. But uh, yeah, that's, that is honestly, again, pretty wild, if you ask me, because uh, I don't think Coffee should have been able to have a chance, and then he made it so close repeatedly. That was, that was a good, good game. Good time. I think the biggest um, issue there was not cutting off the reinforcement. Um, remember when the first SCV pool came and the Stalkers spotted it, or maybe it was the second one? And they kind of recalled home. I think he should have kept the Stalkers behind the Terran army. I think what that army suffers from is it's so inflexible. When you pull the boys with a tank-based yeah. army, it is one of the slowest blobs of immobility. And you don't really understand this until you play with this all in. A Protoss player that refuses to fight you front on and just like goes around behind and chips at you from behind, you're always worried about the Zealot Stalker flank coming in and clearing your tanks from behind. But then if you're spreading bio behind your army, you're not pushing in as deep. Your tanks have to siege whenever they think there's a fight that's about to happen. And then it takes them forever to unsiege and move around. And all of this buys you time, stops him from reinforcing his army, gets you some free kills. So you can kind of use this. You see Zerg do this all the time, where it's like you go around, you cut off the reinforcement, you go for kind of the counterattack. That forces them to group up their units at home a little bit. And then you just turn it into a flanking army. So you get kind of double value out of the one army, assuming you can hold off the straight shove into your base at home, which is kind of reliant on Colossus and stutter stepping and batteries. That first Colossus getting jumped on by the Marines was a really big problem. So he needed to get either one more force field on the ramp when he tried to do the, the, the hold at the front middle choke point, or he needed to pull back to his battery just a little bit earlier. If Jayshi did either of those um, or came with some zealots from behind, like I said, I do think that could have been a simpler hold. The question is, after such a stressful game, are you really in a calm enough mental state to like make those really minute adjustments that usually only come after studying a replay for a good 10, 15 minutes? He doesn't get to see everything we do. So we're going to see what happens in game two. Oh, well, we get into it. And we're going to start off down in the bottom left hand side with the blue Terran player. It is Coffee. Playing for Mystery Gaming. His opponent, formerly of the ID Mystery, a very good Protoss player. He's had moments where he has won the Chinese region in years past. Now in the combined Asian region, looking for another shot at it. In the top right, it's Jay Shi. I'm excited to see Alcyne because that definitely feels like a step away from that potential of an SCV pull or the super aggressive play for Coffee. So, yes, Coffee is that kind of guy. So, then how does he make that happen on a map like Alcyone? Because, again, like I said, it is normal to kind of SCV pull on this map. It's that little bit larger. You generally see the more macro focused games here. That's something Coffee's okay to go into. He is at least going to open double gas, so the pressure will be on from the start. We'll see how heavy it'll be with what he builds next. Getting scouted when you're going for that 3RX build feels pretty terrible. Terrible. I, I think, you know, losing a game sucks like that as Coffee. On the other hand, I think you feel pretty confident going, hey, man, I got my 3RX scouted. I, I ended up pushing really late. Probably shouldn't have worked. Almost did. Like, hey, that's not too bad. We're going to have even different range of timings available. Now, the Double Gas build also has 3RX marine tank timings that you can do, and they hit so fast. You have next to no economy off them. You know, your, your command center is quite delayed off of the double gas opening. So they are even more committed, but it is something that demands an even bigger response from Protoss. So we'll see if Coffee does stick with kind of the same format, but just sped up a little bit, or if he's going to change it up drastically and uh, maybe go for some Widow Mine Harass, maybe get a Liberator in there. We've seen a lot of Liberators so far, so I wouldn't mind seeing the the liberators they haven't really found the mark so far today though have they no libs have been quite crap quite crap today to be honest haven't they they've just been <laughs> uh they've just they've just not been that good even when they've kind of sieged up and gone a couple kills yeah they've not been amazing it's, uh we'll see if coffee wants to go that route or not uh, currently just getting his factory finishing cc will build high ground as well it's very common because you're just saying no no nonsense not going to deal you're trying to delay, delay that or anything so just builds that high ground, builds that safely. We'll get a Helena now to join this Reaper on the scouting process. And Jay, she's not going to waste time. He goes straight into the Twilight Council. So, okay, I I'm seeing a pattern today. We haven't really seen much Stargate play in PBT. Um, if that's something regionally where none of the Protoss players are doing it, that can be taken advantage of. And I'm kind of thinking back to my basics. I'm like, I know it's bad if you only do one opening. Normally, historically, it was proxy Hellions. Mm -hmm. It was really like it, it could do crazy damage if you don't have like oracles or phoenix right if it catches you off guard uh you can you can really run in and get out of control with some of those more aggressive openings in this case though it's going to be reaper hellion 
three Reapers and a Hellion, maybe two Hellions. There is a third gateway unit building. It was a big delay in starting it. But if he has two Stalkers and an Adept, he should be okay. But hey, is that Adept going to be able to survive is the real question. Yeah, it's going to get caught immediately. It does get the shade out, but it's on the bottom left. So that's not going to be back at home to help defend unless we expend a recall or something. And uh, one Marine actually going to come down here. That Adept is low. Going to have a shield regen reset. And now going to be backed into the corner. That Marine's going to go for a Marine does get that kill. The wall off is here though, Pig. And so three Reapers and two Hellions will just hit the wall and not much else. Yeah, good idea to just go for the full wall. Plan is to cancel that gateway once the battery's up. Great defense by our Protoss player. JC's looking clean and no doubt thinking about a third Nexus in the follow through. Now we do already have Tech Labs building at home and it is three barracks without a starport. I mean, it's funny because like I said, I, I found out about this coffee build in like 2019, <laughs> something like that. I was like, this is a cool build. <laughs> 2024 coffee's like i still am the expert of three racks with tank <laughs> variations man he's he's like i i know how to kill people with this dude is he going no stim no shields double marauder concussive shells what shields. yeah that, that's a that wild. is crazy and it, oh he doesn't have medivacs so he doesn't want to stim how, yeah. how, how funny is that <laughs> and, and yet it's actually going to be good against a blink right because it's going to be so stalker heavy Having this amount of Marauders could make this a very difficult defense for uh, for Jayshi. So, yeah, Coffee has potential, man. I mean, we will see how quickly he goes. I think it's going to be a factor. He's obviously got Combat Shield on the way. It's not going to be done just yet. As Stalkers now do show that Blink. Going to go on top of one of those Hellions. Get that kill here. Oh. Even that, just Coffee knowing where this army is and kind of dragging it to the upper left. Maybe making a move for him to get across the map. He's waiting for the third. No, he's moving out now. Yeah, not waiting for the third tank. Now is the go time. No SCVs for repair. It's a pretty vicious timing attack, but on the other hand, you do have... Oh, only two gate. Okay, I was going to say, you've got charge coming in. That's going to be done soon. I'm like, yeah, you don't actually have much with it. There we go. SCVs are coming across the map as well. There's only a third gateway coming in. There are immortals being built as well as batteries. Good positioning for Jayshi. The question is, can his production truly handle such a, a very committed push? The Stalkers are getting great value so far. The concussive shells, though, does force him to be a little bit more conservative with his blink micro. I can't wait to see what the hell goes on here. This is a very committed push for Coffee. He's going to siege his tanks back here battery overcharge goes down and it's going to be of course no stims to worry about you might be wondering where's the stim remember stim is not being made with this push this is i'm going to build bunkers i'm going to siege my tanks and i'm going to give you a bloody hard time the stalkers Ooh. blink forward on the tanks a crazy move but i think it's worth it if he can get both but he only gets one tank yeah one tank is rough because this other tank still firing you give up all your stalkers for that that was going to happen because of the fact it's so marauder heavy and that just means that this fight is continuing to go the way of coffee jay she just can't get the units up Immortals, in theory, is still good here because they do bonus damage to pretty much everything that exists, but we've lost one. The new one's not going to be here for a bit as uh, JC tries to play recovery. I mean, to be fair, if JC gives up his third, is that the worst thing in the world? Because he is ahead by no. a lot of workers, so he can survive on two bases. You're 100% right, Wardy. I mean, that's it. You might be like, how are these pushes so strong? There's a rule in StarCraft. If what your opponents build, it seems too good. It means they're giving up something you don't realize. And in this case, it's any semblance of an economy behind it. Coffee's economy sucks. He pulled the boys, like a bunch of them. He never had that many to begin with. Remember, this was off a double gas opening with an already delayed expansion. But if he gets that Robo, that would be massive. The Robo, second Immortal will get out. The Zealots are so good at tanking. Dude, Immortal Zealot shreds this army so hard. Oh. It's so, oh, the Immortals are gonna clear the tanks. The tanks are gonna go down. That's a hold, I think, just barely. It's so close. I know this tank surviving again, just one of the tanks staying alive is such a big deal but we are going to get zealots on it we will kill this uh, tank off the robo facility like i said still alive but low hp so if that gets finished off and we can't build more mortals i do really worry is i mean maybe we battery it up or something oh, robo oh, super battery last oh second is gonna save it oh my god no it's way. actually gonna live for now i mean zealots still moving through there's just not dps to clean out zealots easily that's the problem that we're seeing at the moment yeah, I mean, it's a good position, though. The Zealots really can't get in with an Immortal there, though. I think he could just click, shift-click the Marauders down. Because once the Immortal's yeah. in range of the Marauders and the tanks, like, the Zealots just don't die, and, and there's nothing to kill the Immortal either. Yeah, that is huge. Now yeah. he can break out, and Jayshi's fine. How, how crazy is that, right? It looks so stressful, but Zealots and Immortals counter this so hard, yeah. as you pointed out earlier. And, and the new SCVs arrive too late, man. He's like, oh, I can finish the bunker. Oh, gosh, I've got nothing to put inside it. Remember, there's no plus one weapons. The eBay's just started. The starport's just begun. There's, there's there's levels of commitment. You know, when you've got 32 workers and four SCVs on the front and no starport and no eBay, there's a reason why this push hits so hard. 
Well, this 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 push just just gets in there, and actually it does get a few zealots as well. But Jayshi, I mean, he's going Templar archives to spend gas, taking a nexus and a gas, maybe a little dangerous. And uh, overall, though, Jayshi has now got got such a powerful spot, and Coffee just has no follow through. These pushes are the very definition of all in. Yeah. Yep. The, the, there's no follow up to these, right? I mean, you are so committed. We're gonna add two more barracks and everything about third CC here. Says Coffee. Jayshi's gonna go storm. That just feels. Well, it's just so risky because if you're store, you're only gonna have a couple high temple. If your store misses, it's a lot of investment that doesn't go anywhere, and maybe that gives Coffee one more chance. But well, I guess if a storm does hit, it's gonna be pretty brutal for Coffee. He does see the high temple for the first time there as he moves on to that third base location. He sees what's up, and he is gonna start moving out once again. First medevacs on the way, but only the first, and there's already units that are hurting out on the map, so that's gonna be busy healing from the very first moments of his life. Um, yeah, Coffee's gonna send it here, and obviously every attack feels like it could very well be the last one from him. The SCVs are pulling once more. Jayshi, I think he's gonna have Storm for this pick. Yeah, the Observers have seen everything. He's been chrono-boosting Storm the moment he saw it move out. It's gonna be ready in a few seconds. Uh, about 10 seconds out, and, and that's gonna be good enough. Siege tanks, Marauders, and Marines gathering up on the front, taking a good position. But here comes the Zealot Immortal Storm. He's gonna try and Storm across these weak units, Zealots. Even storming the SCVs, yeah, it storms his own zealots as well, but it's worth it to clear the meat shield. The tanks focusing down the High Templar was a very smooth move for Coffee, but I don't think he has enough meat behind it. The Immortal line stands strong. The Immortals cleanse their tanks, 19 workers down. Coffee's gonna have to tap out some cool two base all-ins, but you have to give it to Jayshi. Good scouting, good reactions, and good scrappy.